This video will discuss the van der Waals equation of state for gases as a correction to the ideal gas law. So in the previous video we discussed the ideal gas equation PV bar equals RT where V bar the molar volume is equal to the total volume divided by the number of moles of gas P being the pressure R being the gas constant and T being the temperature. And the ideal gas law is true for all gases as the pressure goes to zero, or similarly as the molar volume goes to infinity and all particles are non-interacting. Okay, so what we can define now is, is this quantity Z called the compressibility factor, which if we take both sides of this equation and divide them by RT, we get PV bar over RT which for an ideal gas, the compressibility factor is equal to one. But all gases are not ideal, so as the, as the pressure increases or as the molar volume decreases, what we have is that the gas particles become more compressed, they have fewer space per particle, they're more likely to interact and see each other and respond to their, each other's presence, and thus the compressibility factor for a real gas can vary away from one, and it can be, in fact, anything between zero and infinity. So the more the compressibility factor is closer to one, the more ideal the gas is behaving. All right, so why would a gas behave non-ideally? So there are two forces that are going to compete with each other in order for this uh, non-ideal behavior to result. So one is that gas particles are typically attracted to one another by some extent. There's some weak non-covalent attraction to one another. So real gases attract one another to some extent, and when they attract one another, this means that the volume of a real gas, or the effective volume of a real gas, would be less than the volume of an ideal gas. So the effect of, of them attracting one another is they might tend to cluster together and there'd either be less effective volume or uh, kind of less, fewer effective particles as they might cluster together into dimers or trimers. So when they're attracted to one another, the compressibility factor is going to decrease below one. Uh, conversely, real gases take up space. So there's a finite amount of space which this other gas particle can't be in because of its interaction with this one. So if they get too close, they're going to repel each other because they can't take up the same space. So since real gases take up space, once you compress them far enough, they're going to start repelling each other. And the, the effect of that is that the volume of a real gas, when it's com highly compressed, would be greater than that for an ideal gas. So when this effect is winning, we're going to get a compressibility factor, which is bigger than one. So these two effects compete, and they result in a compressibility factor, which can either go above or below one, depending on the pressure and the temperature. All right, so what can we do in order to combat this? So we have uh, the compressibility factor versus pressure for some various gases plotted here. So as I mentioned, as the pressure goes to zero, all gases behave ideally, but then various kinds of behaviors result. They might uh, instantly start going up, they might go down for a while, then go up, they might slowly go down, but then over a very long time period go up. Lots of things can happen. So the van der Waals equation of state says that the pressure plus this parameter A over the molar volume squared quantity times the molar volume minus this parameter B is equal to RT. So now PV bar equals RT has been replaced by P plus A over V bar squared times V bar minus B equals RT. So we could plot the pressure here, the pressure then if we solve for P is equal to RT over V bar minus B minus A over V bar squared. So what are these two parameters here, this A and B? So A accounts for the attractions of these gases to one another. A is the attraction strength, typically being a positive or, or zero value. So it's the attraction strength noting, accounting for this effect. B is the effective molecular size. So note that for B, we're subtracting it from molar volume. So its unit has to be some kind of molar volume. So that B is the effective size per particle there, or per mole of particles. So B accounts for this effect that the real gases take up space, and you get that result there. 
So what you get is as the molar volume goes down, there's an effectively a lower limit on how low the molar volume can get because it can't get any lower than B, the amount of space that that amount of gas particles takes up in one mole. So there are tables of these. You can find, if you Google van der Waals equation of state, you'll find tables of A and B for various gases. Again, pay attention to the units that those are given in, making sure you use the correct units of pressure and volume to convert those. And those are typically obtained empirically. We'll discuss later in the chapter where these come from, but typically they come from what are called the critical values of the gas, which we'll discuss in some future videos. So uh, as I said, as the pressure gets higher and higher, the molar volume is decreasing and, uh, and eventually this effect here starts to win. So usually at high pressures, the compressibility factor does eventually go above one, but at low pressures, it's pretty much a toss up for which of these two effects is the bigger deal, whether it's a, whether it's a uh, winning by them being attracted to each other more or winning more uh, from them taking up space. That all depends on the relative values of A and B.